Hey booktube, um, I just have another little kind of thought-provoking video here um, that is provoking my thoughts. Um, basically, I want to know if you guys have ever read a book that the whole time you were reading it, it was kind of like so-so, and you were like, it wasn't like bad enough to DNF, but it wasn't so good that you were like super excited to be reading it. And then you're reading it, you're reading it, you're reading it, and then you're like almost done with it. And you're like, oh, I'm almost done with this. I could just, you know, yeah, I could finish this and yeah, I'll read okay. And then you're reading it, you're reading it, and then you get to the last page and you read it. And it's not that it's life changing, but it just like the last page just like kind of knocks you out. Like it wasn't exactly what you were expecting. It wasn't earth shattering, but just the last page you read it and you were like, Oh, and you don't know how you feel about the book because getting there was kind of a slog or just kind of, um, the best example I have for this, and like it speaks to me, but I don't know if it would speak to everybody. But like um, Bukowski said when he read um, George Orwell's um, Down and Out in London or whatever, he's like, Yeah, it was good, but I could play piano better than that, you know? Like, so when. Like, especially reading a book about, like, tough kids or, like, um, these, like, dudes that are, like, like, I don't even know how I'm trying to explain this, but, like, the book in question here was, um, The Blonde on the Street Corner by David Goodis, and... The whole book was, it wasn't necessarily meandering. It just, like, things were happening, and it was fine. Um, none of the characters were horribly likable. Um, everyone was just kind of there. And then, at the end, you were like, oh... I kind of, it's almost like when you watch like an Eli Roth movie and you go, oh wow, the whole reason this whole movie exists was because he had an idea for that gross out thing. And he's like, oh, I'm going to write a movie around this whole idea of this guy getting his eye pulled out or something like that. <clears throat> um, I almost feel like. David Goodis started with this idea. And again, this isn't earth shattering. Like, nothing that happened at the end of this book would change the price of tea in China. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was nothing <laughs> that made the end of this book speak loud. Um, but it was like, I guess the first time in the book that I'm like, oh, I understand these two people. But, like, the the one thing about this book that I thought was kind of clever was the main character, um, Ralph, I think his name was. He's, like, a 30-year-old that still lives at home, um, and it's hard out there to get work, and um, I think they're in Philadelphia. Um, it's just, everything's kind of slumming. And whenever the mom or the sister or anyone starts chewing him out about something and lecturing him on something, he's like reading the newspaper, 
And so it'll be like the mom saying, you need to go out and get a job. And then he'll go, oh, Tucker knocked this guy out in the fifth round last night. That's pretty good. I wonder if he'd be able to keep up with Mahoney. Oh, wow. You need to put food on the table, you stupid piece of crap. Oh, wow. I wonder how much he exercises. Oh, I wonder if I'm in that kind of shape. Hmm. That's some interesting stats. And so that's, like, kind of a fun... And it's, like, we're not talking just, like, a couple lines. Like, we're talking, like a couple pages or so of, like, just this weird meandering, um, which I already said it wasn't meandering. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I just know that I finished the book two days ago, and I'm still thinking about the end of the book, but I'm also thinking about how the book itself was never great. And there were a couple... You guys know the Chekhov's gun theory? Like, you don't put a rifle above the fireplace and draw attention to it unless you're going to use it later on in the story, right? There's probably like six different Chekhov's guns in this, <laughs> and only one of them goes off. Um, and it's just, like, kind of weird. It's... It's almost the same feeling as I had when I read um, 1933 was a bad year. Like, that one, there was some hope at the end. It was scary, but there was hope. Blunt on the street corner, there's like no hope, but you have a, a hopeful feeling even though you know there's no hope if that makes any sense. So, um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say other than do you guys have books? You know, another author who I felt this way with a lot was, um, Mirakami. Like I would read a Mirakami book and feel like not all the time, but some of his books I've read, like you're just like, going, oh, this isn't bad. I'm getting through it. This isn't, it's, this is happening. And then you get to the end and you were like, dude, like that might be like a higher level because I um, came away liking those books a lot more than I came away liking this book. But just, are there any books out there that you felt that way with that you just kept reading it? You weren't sure why you weren't sure where it was going. And, um, then the la not the last page necessarily, but like the end of the book, like the last few pages, it just kind of hit you a little bit. And you were like, oh, huh. And then, because as soon as I finished reading it, I didn't think I liked it. But like, I've read, I don't know, um, I've read at least one other book and a ton of short stories and stuff since I read that and I can't stop thinking about it. So, um, huh. Yeah. So what down below, um, give me the books that did that to you, um, that made you feel that way. And, um, and the links below will also be, um, the discord link, to come to the Paperback Junkie Discord server where we talk books and all sorts of nerdy crap. So, um, anyway, folks, that is that. Um, and I will see you later.